On November 11th, 2020, Barcelona's players and the board failed to reach an agreement for another wage reduction. Yes, another, as the players took a 70% cut in the spring. And now, talks of the B word, bankruptcy, are floating around Barcelona. Hey, I'm Adrian, and today I'll give you a quick update on what's going on with Barcelona's financials, given the news that came out two days ago. But first, once again, a big thank you to OneFootball for being a Rabona TV hero and supporting the channel by sponsoring this video. OneFootball's new and improved interface makes it easier than ever to follow the teams, players, and competitions you care about, such as the team in focus today, FC Barcelona, or if you're a real one, SL Benfica. <laughs> You'll get a custom tailored news feed, the ability to track matches on the go with in-depth match tickers, transfer trackers, highlights, videos, and so much more. Use the link in the description to get a free download on iOS or Android, and you'll support the channel in the process. All right, we'll start with how they got into this position, what they have attempted to do in order to navigate it, and what would happen if indeed they do go bankrupt. Bartomeu and his board may be gone, but the role they played in the club's financial crisis is still kicking around, it's still hampering the club. For example, it recently came to light via Spanish publication El Mundo that due to a miscalculation on Barcelona's behalf, they actually overpaid Neymar by about 10 million euros. And of course, given the position they find themselves in, this could lead to yet another court case between Barcelona and Neymar in order to recoup some of that money. That's the position they're in, where every euro counts. And they put themselves in this position by being a team that offers absolutely gargantuan wages to the players they sign. In fact, the club's books have revealed that 69% of their revenues go to player salaries, which pre-pandemic wasn't a massive problem. It's still a little larger than most clubs would like though. But still, as recently as the end of the 2018-19 season, Barcelona was actually the club that collected the most money of all football clubs with a revenue of 840.8 million euros. That's a lot of cash, so when you consider how close they are to bankruptcy now, it illustrates just how razor thin their margins are thanks to their massive salary expenditures. The average salary annually of Barcelona's players is 11 million euros, the highest of any club in the world. Salaries they could, in normal times, afford, thanks in large part to things such as preseason tours of the United States or Asia. Another big thing that has hurt them is the fact that they have had to completely close down the Camp Nou and the Barcelona Museum. Of course, the loss of match day profits is one of the biggest contributing factors to the revenue losses, but the Barcelona Museum, it's not to be underestimated. They generated over 58 million euros in 2019, according to Mundo Deportivo. I don't know about you, and this is completely anecdotal, but every person I know who has traveled to Barcelona has done the Camp Nou and Museum Tour, and ended up buying something in the club shop following that. That's another lost bit of revenue. Fun fact actually, the FC Barcelona Museum is the third most visited museum in Spain. And so, with tourism getting hit so hard in the city in general, that's a big hit to Barcelona's books as well. On top of this, everyone knows how Barcelona has spent frivolously on talent in the last decade, but that was ramped up following the sale of Neymar. They threw money at the hole that Neymar left in Barcelona, spending big on players like Antoine Griezmann, Ousmane Dembele, and Philippe Coutinho, among others. Now, if you ask Barcelona club president candidate Victor Font about the situation, he says that while the pandemic has hamstrung Barcelona, the problems went way back before that. As he said to Bleacher Report, quote, Barcelona haven't managed their finances properly over the last few years since the last election. We've seen that trend deteriorate since the debacle of Neymar's transfer in 2017 with a couple of very expensive, unsuccessful signings. The club has spent 1 billion euros on transfers that have not returned the types of results the club's fans were expecting. Combine this with poor management of the core structure of the club and it has put Barca in a difficult position. If you add in the pandemic, it has made the situation worse. It's likely the club will try to explain the difficulty in their finances through the COVID-19 pandemic, but the underlying problems were there already. What we need now is a proper plan to better manage the cost structure and create new revenue streams. And then of course there's the debt factor. Barcelona's debt has been growing by the year, like many clubs, but it is seemingly reaching an unmanageable number now. Font went further, saying, quote, 
When you add everything up, our estimate is that the debt is probably around 700 million euros, which puts the finances of the club in a perilous position, especially because of its limited profitability. The club generates a lot of revenue, but it spends a lot of money, so it does not generate enough cash to pay the debt back. Obviously, when you have this type of financial situation at the time, you need to build a new team and pay for the SPI Barca project. That's a concern. The SPI Barca project is the revamping of the Camp Nou, in case you weren't familiar. I wasn't familiar with the name, but the revamping of the Camp Nou, that sounds more familiar to me. And so, all of this leads to... So now that we know how and why their finances have been hit so hard, wages, transfer fees, lack of match day income, lack of tourism income, what have Barcelona done to try to navigate this crisis? On March 31st, the athletes of all of Barcelona's various sports teams agreed to take a 70% wage cut in order to pay for the salaries of the staff of the club, namely the non-sporting staff. Lionel Messi himself announced this via Instagram, saying, quote, as well as the 70% reduction in our salaries during the national state of emergency, we will make a contribution so that the club's employees can earn 100% of their salaries during this time. On top of this, Barcelona offloaded some of their older, costlier players such as Luis Suarez, Ivan Rakitic, and Arturo Vidal. This would have helped, of course, but they also signed players such as Serginho Dest, Trincao, brought in Pjanic, as well as signing a new head coach in Ronald Koeman. Not exactly the kind of actions you would expect of a club that is in a financial hardship at the moment, especially when comparing to their rivals Real Madrid, who met the difficulties of the pandemic by not buying a single player during the summer window, something they hadn't done in 40 years. Like, I get it. La Masia, Barca's academy, declined under Bortomeo, but players such as Ansu Fati, Ricky Puch, uh, Pedri have shown that there are definitely still some gems to be found there, so it's hard to understand the spending they have done during this exceptional time. Exceptional times call for exceptional measures, and surely it would have been to the benefit of everyone within the Barcelona setup to put some trust in their academy players instead of bringing in more players, instead of spending more, instead of adding more woes to their financial records. But Anyways, speaking of Bartomeu, after he left Barcelona at the end of October, Carles Tusquets took over as the president of the management board, and he certainly inherited a ton of issues. Speaking about the financial problems, Tusquets said, quote, The situation is not comfortable. It is complex. We have to act on two lines reduce expenses, and get income from sites that do not exist today. There is absolute uncertainty as to the main income. We assess that to balance things, it will be necessary to make efforts of around 300 million euros. Tusquets said this about a week or so before Wednesday's deadline as far as reaching an agreement on another salary cut with the players. Well, with that deadline coming and going, here's what happened via a club statement. Today, November 11th, after several days of intense meetings and exhausting all avenues, the parties involved have concluded talks without reaching a firm agreement. We find ourselves in a situation where it is up to the management board to make decisions that will help ease the financial problems caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. In monetary terms, the club is facing a loss of income amounting to 300 million euros for the 2020-21 season alone. As such, a salary adjustment of 191 million euros must be made. The negotiating process has revealed the sincere desire of all parties to come to an understanding, including the process of reimbursing wages that must be postponed in the short term. We have overcome things that previously seemed insurmountable. All parties have agreed to give each other until November 23rd to reflect and decide whether the proposals that remain on the table are acceptable. Hopefully for the club's sake, they do indeed come to an agreement by the new deadline of November 23rd, but what if they don't? The word bankruptcy really is a scary one, but it doesn't necessarily mean that a club will cease to exist. We've seen clubs have a financial disaster and yet they continue to compete. Just look at Rangers out of Scotland when they went to administration and were liquidated only to have all of their assets transferred and get their Scottish Football Association membership as a quote unquote new entity that climbed back up the ranks from the third division of Scottish football. But Barcelona's ownership structure is different to that of most clubs in Europe in that they have the socio or membership model. So if Barcelona were to go bankrupt and have their business and assets sold, well, is that even possible? Simon Coopers from the Financial Times and the writer of Soccernomics had this to say to Bleacher Report. Again, I've linked this below for you to read yourself if you so wish. 
Quote, big football clubs like Barca don't go bust. Or correction, they do sometimes go bankrupt, but then they just create a new company and put the football club in the entity and continue as if nothing's happened. That's what happened with Fiorentina in 2002. Remember, Barca's revenues have risen sixfold since about 2003. So even if they lost 80% of their revenue, which I don't think anyone expects, that just takes you back to 2003 when players were pretty well paid. It's not like a restaurant where if you're making losses, the owner closes down the joint. Well, that's a bit of a relief for Akules, but still, the situation remains extremely serious for Tusquets and the rest of the management board, whom you wouldn't be envious of their position currently. If anything, this will most certainly send Barcelona into a sort of decline of sorts, think of AC Milan, and will undoubtedly continue to send the on-pitch product trending in the wrong direction, as they won't be able to invest in the squad as much. But remember, football is cyclical, and teams rise and fall all the time. But that's all for me guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, consider dropping a like in order to feed the very picky YouTube algorithm. And if you learned something new and want to find your way back to us much more easily in the future, then consider subscribing. My name is Adrian, this is Rabona TV, and we'll hopefully see you in the next video. Ciao!